Gary Chillingworth here for Air Gunner. I thought as we've got snow around and it's very, very cold, we could do a piece on cold weather shooting, cold weather dog walking, um, how to keep yourself warm, how to keep yourself safe. So we're going to have a look at some jackets, we're going to have a look at some boots, some other bits and pieces that will actually help you along the way if your equipment goes down and what to do if the worst happens and you get too cold and you can get yourself to a place of safety. So we're going to look into a few of those bits and pieces and uh, we'll start off with some jackets. Okay, we're going to start off with this. Now this, I'll give you a little twirl. <laughs> this is from Sweat Team. Now this is one of the best jackets on the market. Um, it's expensive, they're nearly 400 pounds, but they will keep you warm. They come from Sweden, this, this is what they do. Um, it's in the blaze orange, as you can see. Now if you're a hunter, if you predominantly hunt small game, rabbits, foxes, things like that, they can't see orange. They can only see in predominantly black and white and maybe a few greys and blues, but they can't see this colour because they've only got a two cone system in their eyes. Humans, birds, we can see this colour. So if you're humping around the fields and there is a man half a mile away with a 308 shooting a deer, he will hopefully see you in this as opposed to if you're buried in a bush somewhere in some lovely mossy green. Um, I'm a big fan of Blaze Orange. Um, in America, Blaze Orange massively cut down accidental deaths in hunters, so I'm a big, big fan. Um, other jackets that are not quite as expensive as this, uh, Jack Pike do fantastic stuff. Eddie Jones, our hunting correspondent, he's a huge fan of Jack Pike, as am I. Um, they do a three-in-one jacket that's superb, comes with a fleece. Um, they do great trousers in lovely mossy oak. Um, Jack Pike is certainly a place to have a look at. Um, if again money is, you don't have a ton of money, I'm a professional train driver uh, for what I do for my normal job and I spend my nights running around in one of these. It's a standard jacket, you can get them on Amazon for about 30 quid. They're really, really warm. If I go out walking the dogs, this is what I wear because if I fall over and hurt myself, it's going to be very, very easy for people to see me wearing this big, bright orange jacket. Um, my nickname at work is Space Hopper. Don't ask me why. I think you know why. I think I know why. And I'll be honest with you, when I'm wearing this, I do look like a bit like a Space Hopper. But there you go. Um, now, wearing a really good quality jacket is important. It keeps you warm. It keeps your core temperature warm. But you need a hat. Now, this off of eBay, it was eight quid. It's got a built-in mask. It's got a built-in mask, which is really handy if you just want to nip out to Tesco's. Um, but what it does do is it covers up, it covers up a large proportion of your face. And that wind chill factor hitting your face can be really uncomfortable. Now, over the years, a lot of people have said, oh, you lose up to 80% of your body temperature through your head. Uh, no, you don't. Your head is only about 10% of your body mass, so you don't lose 80%. But if you're walking around and the wind is whipping and it's you haven't got a lot of hair like me, it gets very uncomfortable. And in a hypothermia situation, losing 10% or even 5% could be the difference between life and death. So a good hat is really important. And then finally, well not finally, a pair of gloves. Get yourself a pair of gloves that have got a waterproof coating. If you're walking around and it's raining and your hands get cold because the water has come through, your hands are going to go numb. And if your hands get numb and you need to light a fire, you're not going to be able to do that. So waterproof gloves, good quality hat, a good quality jacket, and you're on the way to, uh, uh, to being safe. So one other thing I'm a big fan of, the good old fashioned Packamac. The old fold up trousers and fold up jacket will sit in a bum bag if you're going out. They won't give you any thermal protection, but they are brilliant for cutting out wind chill. So a decent quality Packer Mac, along with these other bits you've got, and hopefully you should be able to stay safe. Next, we'll have a look at some boots. Okay, boots. Boots are incredibly important because they are what insulate your feet to the frozen ground. And as we can see here, the ground is very, very cold. Now, there are a plethora of boots out on the market today. You can go for these. These are the Hull Killers. 
um, absolutely amazing. Gore-Tex, um, we've got rubber uppers, um, they're superb. They're very, very light, they, they weigh, weigh virtually nothing. They will keep your feet warm and dry, superb. I am a huge fan and I will be completely up and honest about this, I love Jack Pike boots. Now, I have got terrible feet. My wife will tell you this, but that's for a different reason. I really struggle to break boots in. I can't wear Doc Martens. I love them. And I tried for months to wear a pair of Doc Martens, and they just cut my heels to pieces. My other friends, not a problem with them. I've got soft feet. Jack Pike boots are one of the few boots that I can buy, put them straight on and go on a 10 mile walk and never have an issue because they are so soft, supple, waterproof, and I love them. Um, these are my slightly battered pair of hunters. Uh, no, actually, I think these are countrymen's. I, I don't know, I've got so many pairs. Um, but yeah, these are the, the half height ones. I like the, the full height ones for shooting, but mine are currently in even a worse state than this. Um, one little tip and trick. I don't know if you've noticed the cost of laces these days is ridiculous. Almost five quid a pair. Get a roll of paracord for five pounds. This is one is 100 meters long, and that's about... 50 pairs of laces for boots. Always use, I always use Paracord. Um, so yeah, these are absolutely superb. They're, they're soft, they're comfortable. They've got Gore-Tex lining. They will be absolutely great. Um, I'm also a huge fan of the good old fashioned Wellington. Um, this is what I walk the dogs with. Um, I've shot in them. I can get my knee down and I can lay flat with them. Um, again, these are Jack Pikes. Absolutely superb. Um, never look past a Wellington boot. They keep your feet warm, dry, and they're brilliant. People have been wearing them for hundreds of years. Now, these are my Pro Logics. These have been superb for years. But the other day when I was walking past a large, uh, I think it was a piece of angle iron, I managed to tear a hole in the rubber upper. Now, you're never gonna fix that. You could gaffer tape it, you could stick it, but it's always gonna leak. And this can be an issue. If you've got boots that leak and your feet get cold and wet, they're no good. But if you spent a hundred and something pounds on a pair of boots, you don't want to throw them away. There is an option, and that's these. These are socks made by seal skins. Now, they've got a lining on the inside, and you can predominantly, you can put these on and put your feet in water and your feet will stay dry. They are absolutely brilliant. Um, I've had leaking boots before, put these on, and my feet have never got wet. Um, one downside, they will make your feet smell like a badger's armpit. But they're about £30, I think, a pair of seal skins are, but they are superb. Um, so if you've got a broken pair of boots and you can't afford to replace them and it's winter, set a seal skin socks and you'll be warm and dry. So that's about it for boots, and uh, next we'll go on to what happens if you get yourself too cold. Okay, so you've got your jacket, you've got your boots, you've got your hat, you've got your gloves. So one other thing I did forget, I'm actually a big fan of these. They're little, I think they, I think they call them snooths. They wrap around your neck. You can stick them over your head. You can use them as a mask. And essentially they have many, many different applications. They don't cost very much, a few pounds. You can actually get thermal ones. This is my golf racing one, which I use as a mask. But these you just stick in your pocket and they're absolutely amazing. Um, also, if you do cut yourself or something like that, you can use it uh, to help stop any, any bleeding. Right. So we've decided to go out on a long walk. We've got the dogs with us, we're all happy. The weather's nice, and then all of a sudden it comes in and it starts getting very, very cold. A couple of thing, important things. I always tell my wife, even though uh, you know we live in the country here, I tell her roughly where I'm going so she knows what route I'm going to take and when I'm going to be back. So if I'm going to be a bit later, if I can't get through on my mobile phone, um, then you know after a little while, knowing my wife, probably a couple of days, she might send out a search party. Um, there is a wonderful app you can now get on Android and on Apple called What Three Words. Now, what Three Words does is they've cut up the entire world into little three-meter sections, and each section 
has a three word um, identification like peach, balloon, ball and only that one three meter square on the planet will have those three words together. 80% of the UK's emergency services will now use what three words? So if you've fallen over and you're in the middle of nowhere with no landmarks, get up what three words on your phone, look for the three words, call the police, say, come get me, I'm at Peach Ball Hat, and they will be able to locate you within a three meter and we'll send someone out to get you. So let someone know where you're going, what three words, and hopefully that will keep you safe. Next, we're gonna have a chat about what to do if you do get too cold. Okay, next we'd like to talk about what happens if you do get yourself in trouble. Um, early onset hypothermia is anything between 32 and 35 degrees. Well, 32, you are properly in hypothermia. 35 degrees, 36 degrees, um, you're starting to get too cold. Now, I'm gonna rely to notes here because I'm not a doctor, I'm not a medic, um, the information I've got, I've got from reputable sources which have been peer reviewed. So the information I'm giving is from the NHS websites. Now, the first signs of hypothermia is shivering, getting cold hands and cold feet. Now, the reason you get cold hands and cold feet is when your body core is getting too cold, your body starts drawing temperature in from your extremities to try and keep your vital organs working. Um, so that is why you start getting numbness in your fingers and in your toes. And if you start to shiver, it's, it's a way of the body trying to keep you warm. Um, obviously cold skin, but if you're out and there's wind chill, your skin is going to be cold anyway, but it can also look pale. Um, slurred speech, um, fast breathing. If you're struggling to get breath in, um, that can be a, a, a dangerous sign. Fatigue. And if you start becoming confused, now, if you're starting getting to the confused state, if you're walking past a house and you're confused, bang on the door, ask them to call an ambulance. If you're starting to get to the part where you can't speak properly and you're confused, you are properly into hypothermia. So you need to get help quick. Now, what do you do if you, or if someone you love has come into your house or, or a stranger, and you do have hypothermia. Well, the first thing is call 111. If the, if the person is just very, very cold and they're shivering and you don't think it's an emergency, call 111. Speak to NHS Direct. But if you think there is any issue at all, dial 999. Uh, ambulance service are amazing. You know, they will come out, even if you were wrong to call it, they would rather you call it and be wrong than not call and there being an emergency. Um, now the recommendations are obviously get someone indoors and get them out of the cold. If they've got wet clothes, take them off because a wet, you know, a wet jacket, a wet shirt on the skin that will draw heat out much, much faster than warm, dry clothes. Do not put them in a hot shower or a hot bath. Do not stop rubbing your hands or rubbing your skin because what that will do is the body will start warm up and it will draw the cold blood from the extremities back towards the heart and it can cause a heart attack so don't chuck them in the shower don't start rubbing limbs what you want to do is get them sat down covered in blankets a hot water bottle on the stomach um, don't give them brandy no alcohol you know even if you've got a St Bernard do not bring them in with a little barrel of brandy because that can cause issues as well um, they recommend in the old days it will be hot sweet tea now a hot sweet drink is the right thing to do um, they don't recommend caffeine um, if you've got the diuretic drinks you know the diarolite or things like that heat one of those up hot ribena something like that hot juice hot water anything hot to get into the body okay i'm just going to check here um, high energy food give them a chocolate bar give them something that uh, they're not allergic to um, and that's what you need to do. Now, a couple of other bits that I think it's good to have at home. I'm a big fan of these. This is a little pulse ox meter. You just stick it on your finger, you switch it on, and it will tell you how much oxygen you've got in the blood. Um, very, very good. They're seven or eight pounds on Amazon. They're not expensive. Um, and if you've had trouble breathing, that will tell you whether or not you're in trouble. And 
a thermometer. Now, this one does too. It will either read from the skin, but if somebody is hypothermic and they've got cold skin anyway, they're going to have a really cold uh, body. Um, you can this one, see my hands are cold. Um, you, this bit comes off and it goes on the inner ear. You can point it in the ear and that will give you a much truer reading of what to use. Okay, so pulse ox meter, home thermometer, keep the person warm, don't stick them in a shower, plenty of blankets, hot water bottle, call 999 or 111. Okay, so today was just a quick video just to talk about cold weather shooting. Um, this stuff is important. If you keep your body, uh, keep your body nice and warm. If you're out on a shooting day and you're nice and warm and you're happy and your feet are warm and your hands are warm and your head is warm and your body's warm, you're going to shoot much better than if you're sitting there and you're cold and, and it's all horrible. So investing in good quality kit is really important. Um, if there's anything you want me to look at, drop me an email at garychillingworth36 at gmail.com and I'll be more than happy to answer any questions you have. If there's anything you're not sure about, then have a look on the NHS website. Just go to NHS Direct and type in hypothermia. Um, have a look at the Jackpipe website. Their stuff is amazing. And that's about it. So thank you very much. Have a lovely day and keep safe.